So today we're going to cover section three of chapter five. Today we're going to learn how to prove triangles are congruent by side angle side. Now, SAS is the acronym for the shortcut side angle side. Within this chapter, we're going to be learning five different shortcuts. This is just the first one. So what'll be easy on your quiz on Wednesday is you're only going to have learned one shortcut. So if they ever ask you, can you prove these triangles congruent by using a shortcut, you've only learned one. So on the quiz, it'll either be they're not congruent or you can prove them congruent with side angle side. Now, in order to understand how to use side angle side, we need to cover two definitions. The first one is the definition of an included side. And the included side is going to be the side that is between the given angles. So for example, in my red triangle, if I ask you to tell me what is the included side between angles A and B, it's the side that's in between those two angles, and it would be side AB. Now, when we refer to the included angle, this is the angle where the given sides meet. So for example, if I give you side AC and CB, and I ask you to find the included angle, it's the angle where those two sides meet, what's formed, which would be angle C. Notice a little hint here, the letter that the both sides have in common is the letter C, so that would be the included angle. Now, let me just give you another example. Let's say I draw another little triangle down here. Same thing, same order of the letters, A, B, C. But this time, I'll say, give me the included angle between A, B and B, C. So again, notice the letter in common. So my included angle is gonna be angle B, but again, if you show where the sides are that they're describing, AB, BC, you can see that the angle where they intersect and meet is gonna be angle B. So that would be your included angle. Same thing if I said find the included side in between angle A and angle C, that is gonna be the side that's in between those two angles, and that would be AC. And again, just take the two letters and drop the angle sign, and then that would be your side length. Next, we're gonna see the theorem using this terminology. For this theorem, we're only talking about the included angle. We're gonna use the included side for a different shortcut. So here is the official side angle side congruence theorem. Again, the acronym you can use when you're putting this in as a reason in your proof will be the letters SAS. And what this theorem states is if two sides and the included angle of one triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angle of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. So now instead of looking for six different pieces, all we need to find are two sides and its included angle with congruency marks. So let me give you an example. I'll go ahead and I'm gonna draw a picture of two triangles. I'm gonna show my classic bow tie picture here. So if I go ahead and draw my bow tie, and if I label this with some variables, A, B, C, D, E. So here, let, they're gonna label your picture with some congruency marks. So let's say I labeled A, B, and it's congruent to B, D, and then B, C, congruent to B, E. And then we also have the obvious vertical angles here in the middle. This would be an example of how you can show that these two triangles are congruent. And what I'm referring to is 
ABE over here on the left, congruent to DBC on the right. So my congruency statement could be that triangle ABE is congruent to triangle DBC, and the reason would be side angle side. Because notice I've got a side, a side, and then coming in here and forming the angle, side angle side, on both, would show that these two triangles are congruent. They're exactly the same size and shape. Now, sometimes your figures may not be touching. Maybe they'll be drawn separated. Sometimes the figures will overlap. But for example, let's say I draw two that are totally separate. So let's say I have triangle ABC here and then triangle XYZ. And again, here we could have congruency marks. AB congruent to XY, AC congruent to XZ, and then the included angle up here at the top. So again, you can see that it's got a side and a side, then the included angle, and then another side. So we could state that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle XYZ, and the reason would be side angle side. So here we go, example one. It says state which congruence method or methods could be used to prove the triangles are congruent. If you cannot prove that they're congruent, you're just gonna put NC. Well, we've only learned one shortcut. So for this example, it's either gonna be SAS, or NC, no congruence. So let's go ahead and look to see if we have enough markings and if the markings are in the appropriate places to use side angle side. So notice on the first picture, I've got congruency marks on these corner angles. I also have a congruency mark on the side. So the two triangles they're asking me to show are they congruent are this one on the left and this one on the right. Now the other thing that I can bring in here that is congruent is the side in the middle, this reflexive side. However, if you notice the angle that's marked, it is not the included angle, so these two triangles are not congruent. The angle that would have needed to have been marked would have been this one down here, then it would have been the included angle. So what's marked here is an angle measure, a side, and a side. Notice the A is not in between the two S's. So there is no ASS shortcut or SSA. These do not exist. There is no shortcut with the, or, with the letters in that order. The A would have needed to have been the included angle in between the two sides. So the two sides with the congruencies should have marked or created that angle. So for B, we have some angles that are marked here as congruent. We also have the sides here. So I still need to bring in one more piece. And again, the obvious, my nice reflexive side here in the middle. And notice this time, the two sides that are forming that angle are the ones that are marked as congruent. So this one would be congruent and we would be using side angle side because I have these two sides that are marked as congruent. I've got the middle one and then I've got the included angle. So it goes from side to angle to side. Same thing here. For C, notice on this picture, I have some angles that are marked. However, they have different congruency marks. So what these congruency marks are telling me is that these two bottom angles are not congruent to each other. But I do have some sides marked with congruence. And then I have my vertical angles here in the middle. 
so I could show that these are congruent. However, this is only giving me two pieces that are demonstrated as being congruent. So there is not enough information in this picture having just this side and this side and these two angles marked is not enough information. So this would be no congruence. So you can never look at a picture and think, oh, those triangles look like they're the same shape and size. You can never assume anything. You need to either have numbers or congruency marks. Now, figure D is the same as B. So let me go ahead and um, the only thing that D is missing that B had, B had a right angle, but I didn't even use it. So all I'm bringing in here is the reflexive side. So side, angle, side on both. So this one is yes. And again, side, angle, side. Now for E, notice I've got all of my angles that are marked as congruent. However, I do not have a shortcut called angle, angle, angle that would prove these congruent. So there is no such shortcut because if you think about it, if I had two equilateral triangles, and if you remember that when it's an equilateral triangle, it's also equiangular. So if I put 60, 60, 60 here, these angles are all congruent. However, this is a little equilateral triangle, and then this one's a little bit bigger. So just having the same angles does not make the triangles congruent. It actually makes them similar. And this will be some information that will be coming up later on. All right, next one. It says, is there enough given information to prove the triangles congruent? If there is, state the postulate or theorem. So the two triangles they're referring to are ABE, which is right here, along with CBD. Now notice both of them have two congruent side pairs. All I would need to establish is that the included angle of the red is congruent to the included angle of the blue. And I can do that, and my reason here, I would bring in my reflexive property as well as um, my side angle side. But I'm gonna write this as a proof to show you and I'm also going to pull the two triangles apart to make it a little bit easier to see. So I'm going to go ahead and redraw the red one. So I have A, B, and E, and then the blue one, B, C, and D. And the blue one has this congruent, and then the red one is here. So the only thing I'm left to establish is that this angle is the same in both. So I'm gonna go ahead and write it out as a proof and I'm gonna bring back my angle addition postulate as well as my reflexive property. So here we go, set up your statements and your reasons. So the first thing now, again, your proof on the quiz will have the given spelled out. So you won't have to just put given diagram. It'll be spelled out and you're going to list everything. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it out so we can see everything. So statement one, I'm going to list all of those congruency marks. So I have AB, which is congruent to CB. And I also have congruency marks on DB, congruent to EB. And then I also have that angle up at the top, ABD is congruent to CBE. You can't just call it angle B because there's a bunch of angle Bs up at the top. So you have to use three letters. So this is all my given. Next thing what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show this angle up here at the top in the red. It's actually made up of adding 
two different angles. So I'm gonna show my angle addition postulate. I'm gonna show that this angle up here is these two pieces added together. Same thing on the blue one. If this was split, this green angle is made by adding up the two angles up there at the top. So I'm gonna show that angle A, B, E is made up of adding A, B, D plus angle D, B, E. And then the other one from the blue one, angle C, B, D is made up of adding angle C, B, E plus angle D, B, E. And this is my angle addition postulate And you can abbreviate this as AAP if you don't want to write out all the words. Now, if you notice, both of the angles are formed by adding this guy here in the middle. So this guy here is shared and it's added to both. That's the DBE here. So I'm going to establish that angle DBE is congruent to both, to itself because I'm gonna be using my addition property of equality for this. So this is reflexive. So what I'm gonna be doing is taking DBE and I'm gonna add it to this angles that were given to me as congruent. So I'm gonna take ABD and add DBE and same thing here. I'm gonna add it to both sides. So angle ABD, that statement that was given to me, plus DBE is congruent to CBE plus DBE. I've added DBE to both sides. And this is the addition property of congruence. And you can just put addition. Now, if you look up at, st uh, at statement number two here, notice this is this. So now I'm gonna substitute and put in what it equals, which is gonna be ABE. And then the one below it, this one is the same as this. So I'm gonna put what it equals CBD. And now that I've established that this angle up here is congruent to this, which is my included angle, this is now substitution. And I just proved the two triangles are congruent by side angle side. Because I was given the sides congruent, I just had to bring in that included angle in the proof. So this would be side angle side. Okay, so for this one, it wants us to find the third congruency that you would need to prove the triangles are congruent by side angle side. So I'm gonna go ahead and label what I've already got. ST is congruent to YZ and RS congruent to XY. So again, your third piece would be that included angle. So I would need to state that angle S is congruent to angle Y. And that would be my third piece in order to use side angle side because angle S and angle Y are the included angles. Later on in the week, we're gonna learn another shortcut called side, side, side. So once we learn that one, a third piece of congruency would have been just to establish that the third side, RT is congruent to XZ. And that would be able, that's how we could also of you side, side, side. So again, after today's lesson, we will be learning four more shortcuts in order to prove that the triangles are congruent. We have one more example. It is a proof. So let me set up my statements and my reasons. Again, notice the given was all nice and spelled out. So let me go ahead and just list it in here. So BC is congruent to DA, 
and BC is also parallel to AD, and this was the given. So remember, we're trying to prove that this triangle ABC is congruent to this triangle here, the CDA. So what we need to establish, we've only learned one shortcut, is side angle side. Right now, all I have is one pair of congruent sides. So I can bring in the obvious. I've got my reflexive side here. So I could state that AC is congruent to AC. You could also say CA here. Order doesn't matter. This is reflexive. Now this time, notice I was told that I have parallel lines. So BC is parallel to AD. And then I can use AC as my transversal, which then creates a pair of alternate interior angles, which also happen to be the included angle. So for my third statement, I'm going to state that angle BCA is congruent to DAC, and these are alternate interior angles, and I'm using the theorem to prove the angles congruent because I have parallel lines. And now I've got enough information in my picture to state that ABC is congruent to CDA using side angle side. And that is it for lesson 5.3.